And so where do we come up with these numbers? Okay, one volt, two volts, five volts, 100 volts. Where would these numbers come from? Well, it turns out it's all relative to one specific half reaction. And that uh, specific half reaction, it comes from the standard hydrogen electrode. And so what the standard hydrogen electrode is, is just one electrode, one half reaction, that pretty much every other half reaction ever devised by human, human beings have been measured against, okay? And so what we do is I'll just redraw this. I mean, that's a good picture, but I want to redraw it. All right, so standard, so we're at standard states. All right, so we're going to have one molar strong acid, so H plus ions, in solution with... one partial, or one partial, one atmosphere partial pressure of hydrogen gas. All right, and then you need some electrode, some metal that won't dissolve in acidic conditions, so platinum, let's say platinum. That's not really going to be that important. So that's my standard hydrogen electrode. She. Okay, so if you hook something up, if you hook up another half reaction to the standard hydrogen electrode, let's say we hook up zinc. All right, so let's take that same zinc half, half cell. So we got zinc and zinc plus two, and we hook it up to the standard hydrogen electrode. It turns out that electrons will spontaneously flow from zinc to the hydrogen. So zinc will be oxidized. Electrons will flow. What will we be reduced at the standard hydrogen electrode? It turns out it will be the hydrogen. So the hydrogen ions in the acidic solution will each gain one electron to make hydrogen gas. Or you could hook something up to it that reduces the other half reaction. So we could hook up copper to that. So that other half reaction. So if we instead hooked up copper to uh, the copper half reaction or half cell to the standard hydrogen electrode, the uh, electrons would spontaneously flow from the hydrogen to the copper, and it would reduce the copper. So copper plus two would gain those electrons to form copper solid. Can the electrons from the copper flow to the zinc? Mm -hmm. That's essentially what we could ask by knowing this information. All right. Now we know if electrons flow from zinc to hydrogen, what's that mean about the electrons? Were they at higher potential energy or lower potential energy of zinc? They are higher potential energy of zinc. And so they flow down to the lower potential energy of the standard hydrogen electrode. Now, we hooked up copper, and the electrons are flowing from the hydrogen to the copper. So which one's higher potential energy, hydrogen or copper? Hydrogen, so that's why electrons flow from hydrogen electron. Now, without ever having to do it, we don't have to go in the lab, we can figure out which way electrons are gonna flow from zinc to copper. If zinc was higher potential energy than hydrogen, and hydrogen is of high, uh, higher potential energy than copper, zinc has higher potential energy than copper. Huh? If we connect zinc and copper, electrons will flow from zinc to copper, okay? They would never go, not spontaneously. We could, but we just need to put energy into that. We need to recharge that battery. That's what we've been doing. 
Okay, so that's, that's one of the big re reasons why we did this, measured everything against the standard hydrogen electrode to figure out which way the electrons are going to flow. And then we could also, we measured the cell potential between these, we could calculate the cell potential between other half reactions. Our standard hydrogen electrode is sort of our ground floor. This is our C level. This starts out at zero volts. And anything higher in terms of potential energy or higher in terms of cell potential has a negative voltage. I don't know what zinc is to begin with, but we can look it up. It's on a table, probably next slide. And then anything lower potential energy in terms of cell potential than the standard hydrogen electrode would be some positive volts. So if you looked up these values, you could not only determine which way the electrons are going to flow, you could determine the cell potential between those two half cells. And that could enable you to calculate, you know, how much current you could generate, you know, stuff like that. Or how, yeah. All right, so that is what we're doing here. Connecting the zinc to the uh, standard hydrogen electrode. You measure, you use a voltmeter to measure the voltage between those two half cells. You would get positive 0.76. You could use that to calculate the half cell potential for zinc. Turns out to be negative 0.76 because hydrogen's at zero, the final minus initial is positive 0.76, so that equals negative 0.76. So it turns out you can figure out the half reactions, cell potentials for lots of things.